Hello everyone and welcome to UK Detailing here in Sirencester or near Sirencester in Ewan. Uh, thank you so much for bringing your Alfa Romeos for us to do the famous Megatest 2019 on. Um, we have put together a bucket of freebies for you and I just want to run through what you've got and what to do with it and also the structure of today. Uh, the plan today is to wash all your cars and then we'll be applying to each car a different new car protection product. Now these products are dealer fit, so we've had to buy them on the black market, we've had to beg, borrow and steal them, we've had to be a little bit interesting in our procurement methods because not one of the manufacturers, apart from G-Technic, wanted us to have these for the test. Um, and so our intention is to prove or to find out which of these products we've got actually work, which one works the best, um, and the, we're going to do this with a mixture of uh, kind of science testing in a lab on properly painted panels and real world testing, which is where you guys come in. Um, and I can see you've all got very similar cars. Um, who's got the oldest car here? And what year is that? 2006. 2006. And the newest is a 2010? 11. 2011. So we've got a bit of a span of car, but they're all the same model. They're all the same color and they're all called the same colors from Alfa Romeo's point of view. So they should be broadly similar. And I'm guessing no one's got sky high mileage on their cars anyway. Um, so what we're going to do is, as I say, wash the cars. Uh, we will then machine polish the bonnet as best we can. And there are some that I've seen that will just need a very light tinkling over and some that might need a little bit more TLC um, so that we've got the bonnets as close to as new as possible. Uh, things like stone chips we can't fix at this point, um, but ultimately the main surface of the bonnet should be kind of as virgin as we can get it. And then to half the bonnet, we're going to apply these protection products. Now, theoretically, a point of application on perfect paint, you won't even be able to see which side has been applied to. Some of these aren't, aren't boasting about increased gloss uh, or visual stuff. It's all about protection. And then hopefully over the next nine months or so, as you're driving the car and looking after them and taking them to shows, and I know some live in garages, some live outside, some do a fair few miles, some are treasured more than one's own children. Um, but we will be monitoring them and we'll have lots of forms for you guys to fill in over, over the course of things um, to say, oh, I went up to the Alps so that if suddenly we see there's a massive degradation in protection, we can kind of assess where it is. You're all from the Leicestershire kind of area? Hampshire. Hampshire. Warwickshire. Okay. Oh, <laughs> Mainly Main just down the road. Mainly Leicester. Cheltenham. Yeah, yeah. Ah, Cheltenham. Two. Most Two. <laughs> so we've got nobody by the coast, importantly. Um, so it should be fairly consistent in terms of that sort of thing. Um, so without further ado, I'll just run through what we've got in your bucket. We have five full kits and a sixth due to a, 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 a slight... Um, oversight on my part, I think, uh, which is short of two products, but it's still got most of everything in there. Um, so I thought we ought to give the sixth to the late person just because then we don't have to kind of face the issue down. We can just pretend that it's, it's got everything in. Um, so, <laughs> um, as you probably know, we, what we'll do is, is a little bit of teaching. I'm sure some of you know about the two bucket method, about grit guards, about wash procedures and everything like that. Um, but we'll just refresh memories so that when it comes to looking after your car over the next nine months, you're all doing it in a pretty much the same way with pretty much the same chemicals. Um, again, in the interest of making the test as fair as possible. Um, so I'm hoping you already have one bucket at home, at least, and this is your second bucket, so to speak. And we've put a uh, grit guard in the back of this um, as well. Um, so we'll start with the what we call the pre-wash procedure. So the pre-wash procedure is all about removing uh, as much loose detritus as we possibly can so that when it comes to the contact wash, there's less chance of essentially um, abrading the paint with the bits of grot that are on the car. Uh, for that purpose, we are suggesting we use uh, what's something called snow foam. Um, I don't know, hands up, who has used snow foam? Okay, pretty good, pretty good. Um, this we've been kindly given by Car Chem, uh, who aren't based Millie Miles Way, they're in, uh, just near Nottingham. Um, and this is their pre soaked snow foam, and we'll show you how to use that today. So that's your first step. Um, we also have from Car Chem their Super Sud Shampoo. And this is, they used to have a shampoo called 1900 to 1, which was one of the most concentrated shampoos. You needed very little of it. And even with this, on a bucket that size, probably one or two squirts with, with the head, and that would be it. So it's much more concentrated than what you get in the high street. Um, and you'll find it's really quite nice and, and it's got lots of lubricity. And with a shampoo, some people think it's all about cleaning. Actually, the typical detailer would say the first important thing with a shampoo is lubricity to make sure that you're not doing any damage to your paint. Um, so it's a, it's a strong one for that. And again, by using the same products in all the cars, it hopefully will make a fair test. Um, when it comes to doing your wash with a shampoo, um, we've also got you a chenille mitt. Um, this is a, a pretty decent one. It's a decent size and it's double sided and, and very soft. Um, you can take it as a companion at night because it is so soft. But when it comes to touching your car with it, 
Oh, I don't know. Just as long as you don't give it a girl's I name. Like it. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> Darling, this is my mistress. She's called Deborah, but she won't be a problem. Um, so again, with these, uh, we tested these in the last issue and found these to actually be better for paint than real wool mitts. And usefully for us as well, they're considerably cheaper than real wool mitts as well. So that was handy. Um, and one thing is don't put it on the ground because obviously it'll pick up grot. So I'm going to put it on the lid here. Incidentally, these lids, we've got these buckets from Slim's Detailing and uh, they seal really well to the point you can actually fill them with water, put the lid on. And unless you're going around the Nürburgring, you're probably going to be all right. Um, so after that, we talk about something, after the wash and the dry, we talk about uh, something called decontamination. So we're essentially removing uh, the bonded contaminants to the car. Now, the challenge with this is uh, you, for a detailer before they're about to machine polish a car, they want to get rid of absolutely everything and they don't mind about uh, remaining old wax or old sealant or old protection products because they're going to be machining it off anyway. Problem is for our test, if everybody goes around decontaminating their car and removing all the protection, it, it's going to somewhat nullify our test and none of these products that we're putting in today claim to be defending you know, against a physical abrasion like clay bar. So we've got two products courtesy of Valet Pro. Um, and these guys, a lot of uh, trade users and home users use this kit, it's, it's proven. Um, so first of all, we have citrus tar and glue remover. So in very simple terms, it removes the tar. Um, there are instructions at the back, we'll run through it all with you. And then also we have something called Dragon's Breath, um, which is in, in honor of Game of Thrones. But it also removes fallout remover, which is handy. Um, so uh, again, fallout, fallout is very small uh, particles, normally FE2, uh, that come from your brake pads when they're abrading with your brake disc. They come if you live near a rail yard or industry, it's all in the air. Um, and actually some of it can occur naturally as well. And uh, the idea is this breaks it down into FE3, which is water soluble, which can then be rinsed off. Uh, so again, these are your kind of your decontamination stage. As I say, um, we've included some paperwork, some guides and stuff. Uh, and the idea is not to clay bar the car, which is the third element of, of decontamination, because it could really compromise the, the finish. And your typical new car owner who's got a coating such as the ones we're going to apply probably has never even heard of touching their car with a clay bar and would probably give you a funny look if you started talking to them about it. So we've got to keep it kind of realistic as, as we can. Um, next, in terms of what we're doing today, um, to prepare your bonnet for the for cars that don't need much work, uh, we'll be giving them a sort of a light single stage machine. And the idea with that is just to remove anything that the decontamination hasn't. Uh, Dodo Juice have very kindly given us some um, Lime Prime, which is a, a, a really good product for use by hand or machine. And it's just a very fine polish um, and a kind of a pre-wax cleanser as well. Um, and they've also gone so far as to give two pads as well. For those of you with a machine, um, these pads, you've got a microfiber pad, which is quite good for cutting, and then you've got a, a finishing foam pad. Again, for the purposes of this test, don't machine the bonnet while we're on the test, but it's a nice sort of takeaway for home. And also, once the test is complete, we'll be able to then remove any remnants for you, and then we can put on a different LSP on the rest of your car so everything's consistent and your car is looking better than it does today. And we've got various other goodies. So uh, I've just given you some flyers about uh, so you can get in contact in terms of watching YouTube videos, which we'll be featuring these cars on and obviously in the magazine. And if you get people walking up to you and saying, oh, what are you doing with your car? You can give them this and that gives you about 15 seconds, by which time you can run away and not answer the same question you've had to answer 10 times over. Um, we have also got two bits of paper in here. Uh, the first one is just, I need you guys to fill in and return. It's just your contact details um, and also just a consent form to say that you're aware of what's going on and that we haven't kidnapped you and forcefully applied products to your car and stuff like that because um, prison isn't great, not second time around. And um, then there is a second sheet here, which is just a bit of information on looking after the car, on the idea um, of, of what we're trying to achieve and also our contact details. If during the test you have any questions whatsoever, even if it is, oh, I've got this product, can I try it on the car? Or this has happened, what should I do? Just give us a call, drop us an email. We're very much here to help and, and it'd be much easier for us to know what's going on and then we can you know, adapt anything that we need to. Um, from our point of view, our number one priority is to find out as fairly as possible which of the products that we're going to introduce into these cars is the best for protection. That's our, our number one goal. Some of these companies we know, some of them we don't. As I say, when we started this test, we emailed about a dozen companies or less, I think probably 10 companies. We got two replies from all of those. One was to say, we uh, aren't gonna be in the test, uh, as in we're not gonna help you with the test at all. And the other one was very, very positive and said, yeah, we're absolutely here to help. Here's the product, take it, have a go with it, um, which tells you how nervous the manufacturers are about it, which from my point of view, as an editor is a little bit scary because um, we've got to make sure we do it right so that there's no comeback on us because there's always a sore loser.
Right, everybody, as you have seen, uh, we have done the pre-wash on your vehicles. And the idea of the pre-wash is to remove the loose dirt that's on there uh, and to soften any of the more stubborn dirt that we'll then bring off. And now we're going to focus on what we call the main wash. Uh, it's also known as the two bucket wash. Uh, there is such a thing as a three bucket wash where the third bucket is used for wheels. But as we're interested in paint today, we're not paying too much attention to all your lovely wheels. Um, so I just wanted to give you a guide, an approximate guide of how to wash your car safely so that when you get at home and over the coming months during the test, you're able to wash it if you want to wash it. Um, we'll have a whole record system. So we'll be sending you links to fill in forms so that you can tell us how often it's been washed. Because obviously a car that's washed every day and then does 100 miles is going to be a different kettle of fish from a car that's done 10,000 miles and not washed at all. Um, and we're going to kind of allow for that in the results. But essentially, um, we have given you one bucket. We need you to have another bucket for the two bucket method. That's kind of the thing with it. In the bottom of the bucket, you'll find something here, uh, which I think one calls a, a, sort of a wash grid. The, 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 there's a, a name of the company that invented it. It's called Gritguard. Um, and this one, I think, is a scratch shield. And there are various other makes. But essentially, the idea is this sits in the bucket, bottom of the bucket. And all the grit off the car that you've rinsed with your mitt sinks below this. And these baffles are supposed to stop water swirlage making it come up again. Therefore, when you're putting your mitt back in the bucket, you're not picking up the grit and putting it back on your car and putting some lovely swirl marks in there. Um, and ideally, you have two buckets, as I say, one with shampoo in, which is what we call the wash bucket, and one which is just plain water, which is the rinse bucket. And it's a fairly simple principle, to be honest. Um, and before we get into that, I just want to talk about wash media. Um, I told you it was going to be exciting today. Um, so this is what we call a chenille mitt. From certain parts of the country, they call it a noodle mitt. Um, and we found in our test that this was the, the safest way of washing a car. But if you have a real wool mitt or something like that, that works just as well. But again, for the purpose of this test, if everybody is using the same mitt, um, then it just gives a bit of consistency across it. So the simple principle is you dip your mitt um, into your wash bucket. Generally speaking, we'll dip it about halfway because dirt will get into your wash bucket, however effective you are at rinsing. And again, you don't want to be picking that back up again. So you start at the top of your vehicle and have plenty of water, plenty of shampoo. A lot of the water, the benefit of the water and the shampoo is not just cleaning, um, but it's lubricity. So to be able to move it smoothly across the surface. So start at the top of your car. Be careful when you're moving towards the car. If you've got any belt buckles or watches or rings that might scratch it while you're doing, just be aware of it. I'm aware I've got sunglasses. Um, and then move in straight lines across the surface. I'm applying no pressure. It's just the weight of the mitt that I'm doing. And then depending on how dirty the car is, if the car is um, really dirty, you want to be very regularly rinsing your mitt into the rinse bucket and then reapplying shampoo. And again, it's not just a kind of a token dip it in, pull it out. You actually really want to be kind of stroking it like you would, you know, a Labrador um, to get rid of anything that's in there and then properly rinse it out. Because what you'll find on a dirty car, this bucket will be black with dirt by the end of it. Um, and this one should be clearish. So again, dipping it in about halfway plenty of water and again long streaks you don't need to go over the surface really more than once if you're doing it properly as I say no pressure whatsoever um, and I'm obviously doing this in slow motion when you're doing it for real you can you can go faster one thing to be aware of is go to the middle or just over the middle of the car there's no point stretching even further because you're creating more risk of damaging the car that way um, and then you can um, just sort of overlap them where you've been before and then you just essentially go all around the car from the top to the bottom and then once that's completed uh, we will just rinse off the cars and then we'll dry them uh, with a mixture of drying towels which are sort of super soft absorbent towels um, and again it's not wiping it's laying on and patting prevents more marks going in and we happen to have a flex dry blower thing uh, which think of it like a leaf blower more or less and it's just blowing all the drips and dribbles out of there what i'd suggest doing it is doing the car in sections so on a car that's this dirty i.e not that dirty you could do half a bonnet half a roof uh, then do a dip, then do the wings, and bear in mind that lower down the car, the dirt it'll be. So the last bit of cleaning I tend to do, and I often will use a separate mitt specifically for it, is going along the sills, because that's where there's an awful lot of grit. And even a car that looks reasonably clean, you go along the sills and it'll, it, it's, it's not pretty. Um, and then on little detail stuff, again, just remember the stuff you can't see. So I can see around here, but I can't see the underside there. So just remember to stroke that and do your glass by all means. Um, more or less every surface of the car can be done. Just don't do the wheels because, again, you want to have a separate mitt, ideally, and a separate bucket for wheels because they've got all sorts of nasty contamination on. So what I'm asking you all to do now is you've all got um, wash buckets. You're sharing rinse buckets because we've got a bucket crisis. Um, and um, if you'd all like to wash your cars, and then we'll come around and rinse them off and dry them for you.
Hello everybody, as you've seen, uh, we have been washing, pre-washing and washing and drying all these cars. This car has also come in now for some machine preparation. So we've been using, or rather James and Ian have been machining the car with Lime Prime, wasn't it? Yes, it was, yeah, and a microfiber pad. Microfiber pad, and the idea is not to get rid of all the swirls, it's purely just to clean the paint fully, ready for the application of these products. Um, and the first product that we are gonna be featuring this mega test is um, William's Ceramic Coat. Williams Ceramic Coat, which claims to offer, uh, what sort of protection, I wonder? It says invisible protection and clear results. Yeah, I think it goes along the lines of you'll never need to wax your car again. Okay, so that's quite an extreme thing. Yeah. Um, now, with all of these products, we have been working hard because we weren't given any of them by the manufacturers apart from G-Technic Platinum. Um, we've had to source these as best as we can. So because we can't buy them direct from the manufacturer, we cannot guarantee that it's genuine, that it's brand new, that it's all the rest of it, but we've done our best to get them as good as possible. So this one, as you'll see here, is sealed. And in fact, that's why I'm waving a knife around for once, is to break this seal. And we're gonna have a little look inside. And this is what a dealer would get, wouldn't it, normally? Yeah, so they're supplied by a, uh, a brand which also offers um, aftermarket warranties for used cars. So they generally supply them to used car dealerships. Gotcha. And they cost, you reckon, about 34 quid, but we don't know. I think know. so, yeah. I think they do an upgrade kit, which includes an aftercare kit as well, which is around the 65 mark. Okay. But as far as I'm aware, these are around sort of 30, 35. Well, this is a veritable toy box here. First Ooh. of all, we have William Ceramic Coat. So I think this is the Ceramic Coat itself. And again, if you look on camera, uh, you'll see it is all sealed. And with true ceramic products, once the seal is broken, they'll start crystallizing anyway on the holes. So yep. that looks pretty fresh to me. Mm -hmm. Can I give you that one? Yeah, sure. Um, it's got lots of hazard signs in the back, which is kind of a good sign. Um, and then in here we have pre-clean. So I am just going to guess, it says instructions for use to be used before applying ceramic coat, wipe all panels with cloth provided, and there is one in here, uh, wipe off, make sure the, clean is, the car is clean. So that's essentially a wipe down, that's standard procedure before any ceramic coating, yeah. um, and they've supplied the product for it. So if that's followed, that's good news. Um, then we have a bigger bottle of leather protector, which is interior stuff, which we're not testing. Um, and then we have another bottle of leather, two bottles of and a bottle of fabric protector. So we don't need to worry about those. And they supply a uh, microfiber and it looks like it's got a second. Do you want to open that up and just see what we've got yeah. inside there? I think that's the panel wipe cloth, to be honest. And all sorts of other bits. Some of these, um, as I say, they're all genuine. Here we have a card which has got oh. a unique registration number that I'm gonna cover up because the person who's kindly given this to us straight from a dealer probably wants to keep their job. So I'm just covering that up, but it's got a unique warranty card. Um, we're going to have to find a new applicator now that James no, we've has got that one. Sorry, we've got to. We've got we've to. Got to. Um, and I think the all-important sticker that they love sticking on before doing anything necessarily is in the bottom here too. And it just basically says it's, it's, it's protected. Um, so what I'm going to do is leave this now to James, qualified detailer, um, to apply this product to half the bonnet. And uh, we'll follow all the procedures as instructed. And then this car should be sent into the real world uh, for testing over the next nine months or so. And then we'll be doing lots of, sort of little interim reports on it. And we'll be getting the owners to, to write in with us and, and fill in forms to say what their cars have been doing and what their impressions are of the coating uh, at that particular point. Um, so I will now hand this over to you. Actually, you don't need any of this now, do you? Oh, you might need a pre-clean. Um, uh, and are there actual instructions in there? Yeah, yeah, there are kind of actual instructions. They're kind of brief. But oh, are they on the bottles? They're okay. on the bottles. Um, so we will apply this as per the instructions, which is what you would imagine any car dealership valet or contract valet would do. Um, and we'll see how it rolls. So we are now with Alfa Romeo number two, uh, and it is again red, and this one doesn't have a roof either. And we're gonna be testing Autoglim Lifeshine. Now, Autoglim did get back to our email when we asked them, and they said that we don't wanna participate in the test, we can't supply you the product, 
because it is designed for dealer application only. And indeed, on the side, it says dealer, dealer application, PDI use only, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but uh, that wasn't good enough for us. So we went onto the black market and we saw some. And this is again sealed. Believe it to be in date. The actual registration has been uh, blanked out with pen. Um, but we will be. Um, we can still actually read it through there. So we know it's a genuine kit with a genuine number on it. And this is their latest one, which is called a Carbon Shield. And the Carbon Shield one uh, is their latest tech, isn't it, James? Yeah, I think so. It's their version of a ceramic without being a ceramic, I think. OK, so what sort of technology do you think it uses? I mean, it's all conjecture, isn't it? I mean, I, I would imagine it's still following the same route as the previous life shines, which is a polymer. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, the, the age-old life shine we've all been sort of privy to for years and years was a, was a polymer coating, two-stage. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of speculation of it being possibly super resin and extra gloss mm -hmm. um, but I think they were slightly different um, so yeah I would, I would expect this to be a, a, a sort of newly developed version of that kit well um, to be honest with life shine there's I think with a lot of people feedback that we've had from the trade is that when it's applied properly it's a really strong product yeah. um, and as I say it's gonna be a recurring theme I feel let's put down the really sharp blade a recurring theme about the difference between application and product quality um, but what we're testing here is straightforward product quality when applied properly uh, the polemic of, of other forms of application we shall leave for the magazine uh, and here like the other one we've got a real bag of googie goodies um, so we've got glass guard that we don't need but that's interesting um, we have various different bits of cloth. Uh, we have a camera resistant trigger, good to see. And then what else do we have here? We've got interior protectant again, which we don't, we're not using the interior size. Um, and bodywork carbon shield part two, ultra durable protective coating for vehicle paintwork. So it is a, it's, it's two stage. It is a two stage. Um, a lot of the other products we've got have got a two stage as well. And I'm trying to find stage one at the moment. We will have a dig around. I can't find a stage one unless this is okay no so this is numbered one that's oh, number right, two okay. and that's number three so actually it's a one stage um for the paintwork yep. and they've just sort of put it into the whole vehicle protection system which i guess makes sense even if it did make me slightly worried temporarily um as before we've got various stickers applicators um the instructions on the williams one weren't great for the application there weren't any that we could find no they did mention fatal quite a few times as well in terms of health and safety yeah so um but have, have you have you have you died yet or not yet but we did use um respirators apparatus, yeah good probably wise always be safe with these particularly the more advanced protectors they can be dangerous and the interior ones are particularly lethal in certain cases so um, here we have some actual useful information by the looks of it we shall have a read and then we're going to apply it to this car and then send this car off into the real world and see what happens We're now doing our third car. Mm -hmm. Number three. Number three. And um, we are applying, oh, I can't read this. That's because it's slightly in Arabic, I think. Ah, that's there better. We, um, we are using Gardex. Now, this is uh, a product which is also known as Protectex and various yeah, other X, yes. brand names. Anything with an X after it, I think, apart from Liberty X, who were very big in the noughties. Yes, I've heard of Liberty X, actually. They're very trendy. So the issue with this one is that it wasn't sealed. So although it is a correct box uh, and it contains everything in there, we've got the stain guard, which is for the fabric side, which we haven't brought along with us, but it did come in the box. So we believe this to be a new product. Um, it's got the correct CLP regulation symbols on there. So we're not talking about something that's 20 years old or anything like that. Um, now, in here, we have two little bottles, mm -hmm. which I shall give to Ian to talk to you about. Yeah, so this is a two-stage product, unlike the ones we've tested so far. Um, difference with this one is you put the first stage on, let it haze, and then the second one goes directly on top, so there's no buffing in between. Um, also, you will find that you have to put this on with a damp cloth. What that does to it, I'm not completely sure, but uh, we'll do some looking and find out if it makes any difference. So, and it's interesting that the second bonds to the first as well, so there's some sort it's of chemical reaction. There's a, there's a cross-linking going cross on there somewhere, yeah. One thing I've noticed is the stickers back to front, which is a bit daft, isn't it? Yeah, I think, um, I think Joe says we need to put that on the mirror. Oh, okay. That's we put that goes. on the mirror so yeah. you can read it. Yeah, makes sense. Cool. Okay, Koki, well, I'll leave you to get cracking on this one, see how it works.
So we're back again and now with car number four. Four? Yes. Um, and we are testing another old favorite. This is called Diamond Bright by Jewel Ultra. Yes. And this, James, I mean, this has been on the market longer than you have. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was probably the first dealership coating that I'd ever worked with, uh, closely followed by Superguard, um, mm -hmm. you know, back in the dark ages when I first started. Yes. They were the only two choices. It was literally Diamond Bright or Superguard. And uh, this one is a two-stage, similar to the last product that we put on. Yep. What's interesting you've identified with this is that this stage one can be sprayed on. Yeah, apparently so. Which is interesting because the last product was obviously it bonded with the second product that goes on top. Yep. Um, and I think the principle is going to be the same with this one. This isn't a cleaner. Yeah, so it's a, it's a pre-glaze that you apply, let it go hazy, and then once it's hazed, you apply the second coat on top. Gotcha. And then leave for 10 and buff. And, buff. and um, as with all the other cars, we've prepared it, as you've seen, with machine polishing, and they've been wiped down properly, so it should be yes. a virgin surface. Um, and actually, this car, despite being, um, well, it's no seven plates, so we're talking 12 years old, it has, in fact, been resprayed, this one, a mm -hmm. couple of years ago. Um, so, if anything, the paint is newer than the car, so it's nearer to a new car than the others. Um, so, I, I guess I hand these over to you and yep. see what happens. Thank you. So we're into our penultimate product, and what's really impressive about this one, uh, while many of them have had the proper health and safety signs on them, the CLP regulations, which is great, uh, we like to see that, and it's something we don't see too often in the enthusiast market, but obviously this is designed much more for the kind of professional dealer employed area. However, um, Ian recently has learnt to read, and um, in doing so, he's been reading the instructions on this. So what you'll find is we're using, in, in, if you twist it round, so we can see the name of what it is. This is Superguard Bionic, <clears throat> and it's a polysilazane, um, and it's also extra, but they've missed an E. So um, this is, again, designed as a professional paint sealant system, and unfortunately, because of the Bionic, Ian has been watching too many movies and is, is convinced that he's in trouble. But in fairness, um, in terms of the health and safety, it does say, uh, warning, flammable liquid, uh, vapor harmful if swallowed, obvious, um, skin irritation, causes serious eye irritation, may cause respiratory irritation, and contains some long chemical names. And it, and it actually recommends to wear gloves and a mask. Yeah, you can actually, three in there. Never mind. Um, mask um, or equivalent enclosed environment. Once open, must be used within 12 hours. And it also suggests, does it suggest the use of a fire extinguisher? It did. Uh, it said on the back there it was CO2. A CO2 yeah. fire extinguisher needs to be there. So hence we've got James playing with a fire extinguisher. So generally speaking, uh, we hope it'll be right. And I don't want this to be misconstrued that this chemical is any necessarily more dangerous than any of the others we've had in there. Um, but it's always good to see PPE, even if it is taken to the point of ridicule, like here. Um, but anyway, I shall let them get on with it and, and keep a safe distance. Hello everyone, and now for the final product. This is G Technic Platinum, and they've sent us a big box of stuff. So it's for interior and other bits and bobs, as well as the paint. So we're gonna do a little bit of an, uh, a cut and an open for that one. Um, but I just wanna say it's good for G Technic to actually send us the product and want to be involved in the test. They are the only company who have done that of all those people we contacted. So I think there should be some credit for doing that. Yeah, definitely. Um, and so we shall break the seal. It says now, it says, do not accept if a seal is broken. So this one is obviously, we've just opened it, that's good. Um, and it's like Christmas. Ooh, wow, okay. So we have a bag, and in the bag, it's like pass the parcel, this. We have what looks like a full maintenance kit, which 
check this out. There's some serious thought has gone into this. So we have C2V3 liquid crystal, which is a basically a spray sealant, isn't it? Which I yep. think is designed, talking to Rob about this, is that this is kind of a top-up thing, so you can put it on as part of your maintenance pack to uh, basically get the hydrophobicity back because the product itself is not designed to be massively hydrophobic. That's right, yeah. Um, and we have actually a full kit here. So we've got W6, which is a fallout remover, tire dressing, perfect glass, quick detailer, wash, and various microfibers. So that's pretty impressive. Now I'm guessing we've got some more stuff out in the front here, uh, which are just uh, triggers, various triggers. Um, and I'm just gonna put that back in here. But here we have another secondary box, which I imagine is the sort of thing that you need to be looking at. Yeah. What have we got here? Okay, so we've got um, fabric and carpet protection. Again, we're not going to be using that today. We have panel wipe, useful. Yep. We have um, leather and vinyl protection. Again, not for today. Uh, we have wheel seal, so not for today. Um, and then we have G55, so this is glass sealant. This really is total surface protection, isn't it? Yeah, it's a full kit. Full kit. Um, we've got, I think those are gloves. I'm going yes, to maybe. take a punt there. <laughs> and then here, I think, is where the special stuff is. So this is Crystal Coat. So this is a similar bottle to things like Crystal Serum Light and all the other G-Technic um, ceramic products. And I know, talking to G-Technic, they would describe this as a proper ceramic, is, is, is what they were describing yep. it as. So it'd be interesting to see how it works. Um, and then it even has application instructions. Again, yep. a really good sign. Um, and let's just see if it's got CLP. Yeah, we have CLP regulations. And a quick fact, if your bottle is under 30 mil, apparently, because the label's so small, you don't have to put the, the hazard warning sign on. Um, and then if it's over 30 mil, you have to regardless. Right. I think Does it need a company in paperwork though? Or uh, packaging? I, I think it may well do, yeah. I yeah. think it may well do, but it's on the bottle here. Um, so what do you think this is? Do you think this is a real ceramic? Um, I think it's going to be along the lines of the crystal serum range, but it will be a lesser version. To make um, it easier to apply. And, and obviously we've seen various reports from pro detailers regarding loss of hydrophobicity, but those who know the G-Technic range know that the crystal serum itself is semi-hydrophobic, mm -hmm. and there's usually a part two to the process, which is XO or in this case C2V3, which would give the hydrophobicity to the coating Similar to other brands, Gion have got the, uh, I think it's bead, yeah, um, to go on top of the moss, which is the hard protective coat. Um, and obviously Nanlex have got the base coat and the SI 3D, similar sort of situation where you've got the hard layer base coat, which is semi-hydrophobic, and then you've got the hydrophobic top coat to go on top. And that's one thing that's uh, a big focus on this test is lots of people in the, in the detailing kind of enthusiast and unfortunately in the professional world yeah. say, oh, if it's not beading, it's not protected. Correct. And actually some of the best protection for the hard coats and stuff is, I mean, some of them are even hydrophilic, let alone semi-hydrophobic. So yeah. um, first of all, it makes our job tougher in terms of spotting whether it's still there. Yeah, that's the main issue with hydrophilic coatings. It's sort of knowing whether it is still present or not without doing a, a sort of microscopic test so yeah. to speak so what we're going to do is um you know the c2v3 that we've seen in there is a well-known well-respected product that's yes. used all over the place uh, that is not what we're testing that is a decent spray sealant yes um and what we're testing is the 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 crystal crystal coat because that is the the primary protection thing yeah. some may cry foul and say well hang on you know others had a two-part product um, that is, I think, it, it's a, a legitimate thing. But as I say, you know, C2V3 on its own would give good protection for a significant length of time. Yeah, and as far as we're aware, it's not a necessity to add the C2V3 for the actual protection to be there. Absolutely. Whereas, we'll, we'll have a read through and just yeah. confirm on that. Um, if it turns out they say that you have to apply the C2V3, then I think we'll, we'll have to yeah, apply the C2V3. Um, so, yes, this is really interesting. This is a, um, you know, an enthusiast brand that is... is targeting the, the, the sort of mass dealer market yep. um, and trying to bring the kind of enthusiast level of, of quality and, and interest into it um, rather than just the kind of stuff that's been around for 20 years. So I'm, I'm really interested to see how this works. Yeah, me too. Um, and uh, I'm sure we will put it to the test on this lover at lovely Alpha Brera. So uh, let's see how it works.
So it's been a long day here at the UK Detailing Academy. We've been applying, uh, well, first of all, we've been washing and decontaminating six different Alfa Romeo Spiders and Breras, and we've been applying coating to half the bonnet, having machined the bonnet as well. And it's been really, really interesting watching how these different coatings work. So there's a big variation in terms of the consistency of the coating, uh, in terms of what it looks like, what it feels like, how it's applied. What I'm really impressed with is some of the products have got all the right hazard warning symbols. They've got really good instructions. They're nice and clear. And I can see that although they are specific for dealer application, uh, frankly, anybody could apply them if you just read the instructions and do it properly. However, some of the products uh, have got a bit thin on the instruction side and a bit thin on the hazard warning side. And equally, in terms of the application, we've seen some products where after application, we've removed the tape from down the bonnet and you can see where the product has been. Other ones, you can't see. Now, it might be tempted to, tempting rather to do a sort of water bead test, but all of these have said that they need a certain amount of time of curing time prior to getting them wet. So at the moment, we have restrained ourselves from that. And now it's up to the owners. All six owners are going to be taking their cars away around the countryside. Uh, some of them are kept in garages. Some of them are kept outside. Some of them are monocoddled. Some of them are daily drivers. Uh, but we're going to keep a record of all of these different things. So we'll be able to take into account the different lifestyles of the vehicles. And we're going to be at the uh, Alpha event at Bewley, which is only in a couple of weeks time. And another event in Bicester, which is a couple of months time at the end of June, I believe, uh, where we can actually catch up with the cars and catch up with the owners and see how it's going. And in the meantime, if if you happen to see a red Brera or red spider, keep an eye out for a little multicolored vinyl that says hashtag mega test because that will be one of the test vehicles. And on all the vehicles, the coating has been applied to the left hand side of the bonnet as you look at the car, apart from one of the vehicles where it's been applied to the right hand side because of some stone chips that we wanted to circumnavigate. Anyhow, the main part of this test is to see which product in a straightforward product test, ignoring all the politics of the dealers and all the application methods and just see straightforward when applied properly, which of these products is best. That's the first step. The second steps we will get into in the magazine and we'll have more of a debate about the kind of the whole politics of the situation and how these compare to normal products that you can buy over the counter rather than through a car dealer. Anyhow, for now, we're just going to let these go off. We're going to be sending out lots of emails and forms for the, uh, for the owners to be completing and sending back to us so we can start to build up a picture about the lifestyle of these vehicles. Also, we have 16 four millimeter thick, two foot by one foot aluminium panels that are currently being painted precisely how they would be from the factory at vast expense. It's costing us 800 pounds alone in paint um, to make sure that we can do some scientific testing in a kind of a more lab environment, um, obviously, uh, as opposed to the real world, which is what these are. So anyway, these results, we will be publishing much more information in issue nine that comes out at Waxstock in July, and then probably conclusions will start to roll in in issue 10 which comes out in December. So if you'd like to find out how this goes, do subscribe. It's only 9 dollars for the two magazines and uh, it's available at www.pro-detailer.com. In the meantime, I'll leave you to admire these cards.